It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yes, we're just entering into the Christmas season, a time of year of which I absolutely enjoy. I enjoy looking and seeing all the lights around, the, the, the beautiful songs, Christmas songs, the carols that we sing and we hear. And I believe that it really resonates and really gives an atmosphere of expectancy, of love, of cheerfulness, even in the midst of a lot of darkness that's going on in and around us. And I believe that even in the midst of adversity, we need to be cheered up. We need to experience God's love that has been made available to all of mankind. Today, we're going to start a series that I've entitled that really captures and speaks about the Advent, Advent, and really speaking of His coming. Advent is something that within the Christian church, where we set up a time period where literally over four Sundays coming up to the day in which when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, that it really speaks of four areas. One is hope, second is love, it speaks of joy, and then also peace. So today I'm gonna to be starting it off, I'm gonna start it off with hope, speaking about hope. So would you join me in a word of prayer as we start this series off together? Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for yet another opportunity that we have in which we gather around your word. We acknowledge your presence, your omnipresence that is with me, as well as with each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Whether they're in their living room, dining room, bedroom, wherever they, that they are, you are right there with them to meet us at our point of need. So we thank you that this word will go forth unhindered by any demonic force. We thank you that it'll fall on good ground. Father, I thank you that we'll hear something that we've never heard before so that we can believe some things that we've never believed before. And Father, I give you praise and thanksgiving that you are the one who's leading and directing us into all truth. So we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, would you come on? Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. Well, guess what? Advent begins literally this Sunday, December 3rd today and then it goes right until December 24th. We need to understand that Advent is really captures from this Latin word that speaks of coming or speaking of arrival, okay, arrival. And one of the things that the early church really uh, embraced about the season or that they celebrated was that they looked towards, the, they had great anticipation concerning his coming, the coming, the next coming. You know, well, we understand that Jesus, his first appearance as a babe in a manger, of which we celebrate and we thank God that he came as a baby, but guess what? He's not a baby. He grew up, amen, he grew up. But he came first time a savior. The next time that he's coming, he's coming as king. He's coming to reign and to rule and to govern. Glory be to God. So Advent really speaks of, it's twofold. It's celebrating Jesus' first arrival or first coming, but it also speaks of his, are we having an anticipation of his second coming? But also, even in the midst of the first and the second, we celebrate his arrival and the presence of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, his presence. Oh, would you even right now, would you thank God? Just say, Lord, I thank you for your presence that is with us even right now. Amen. So what we need to be getting some understanding or some backdrop here is that Advent has some symbolisms. There's some symbolisms that we're going to look at that really reflects the 
character of God in this season. I know, you know, people have their hangups or their belief systems. Okay. Some individuals, you know, like to have a tree. Some don't. Some like to have, uh, um, uh, uh, garlands and lights and things, you know, and, and, and some individuals don't listen. For me, listen, you got to understand in my house, man, I will, I, I want to be one of those individuals who have a house where it's just lit from top to bottom. Yes, I have had my home, you know, uh, every tree in the front yard, in the backyard lit, every tree, every shrub of put lights on. I've lit the entire basement if if prophetess would would allow me because you know then she says you know that's getting too much ghetto, too much light. But listen, I understand that Jesus is the light of the world. So to get the opportunity to display and to reflect that he is the light of the world, I'm I want to be able to do it. But Guess what? I, I just want us to understand. There's some symbolisms. When we look at this wreath, the wreath speaks of that even we see in Revelations 1 verse 8 that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. You, there, there's no end to him. And the wreath speaks of also reflects of hope that there's no end to hope. Hope, there's, God wants us to have hope even in the midst of adversity. Then we have, we're going to see lights. There's these, these candles that are lit. We're going to be lighting every Sunday within this month. We're going to light a candle because each candle has its own ref, uh, uh, emphasis or symbolism. This first candle that we're going to light today is hope and then next week, as I said, it's going, we're going to be looking at love and then the third joy. And then the last one, peace. We need hope. We need love. We need joy. We need peace to be modeled, to be lived out and have a greater level of expression within our lives within this day. So one of the things is that we need to be understanding is that God is with us. Isn't it interesting that as the prophets declared and what was prophesied about Jesus, Isaiah said that call his name, his name would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Just think about that for a moment. God being with us, not God afar from us, because up until then, there really was this concept and this ideology that was there that God came and God went, right? God came and God went, but there was no abiding presence of God. But as a result of the, 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 the sin of Adam and Eve, their disobedience, we understand sin entered into the earth, sin entered into mankind, sin entered into our genealogy. And as a result of that, there was a separation that took place between God and man. But thanks be to God, God immediately had a, a redemptive plan that was put in place. And that redemptive plan had Jesus coming into the earth to bring us back into right relationship with God. And this is why we must celebrate. This is why we are to be elated about this season call that we celebrate on December 25th is Christmas. We know that that December 25th is not the actual day in which Jesus came into the earth or where Jesus was born as a baby in a manger. We know that that is not so. However, we understand that the, the, the importance of celebrating his birth, celebrating his entrance, acknowledging and understanding that he came into the earth to save the world, to save us. And I, 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 I must say this. I think I like to say this even every year around in and around Christmas that I know that we 
we, 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 we say, oh, there's too much excess about Chris, Christmas or Christmas is, has its, it's, it's so commercialized. Well, do you realize that, that Halloween is rivaling Christmas now for decorations and sales and things of that sort? That, that's something for us to understand that here it is that the something that is evil, something that propagates evil or quote unquote reverence to Satan is having as much emphasis as Christmas that speaks about good. Good over evil. Christmas season or Advent is a time that should cause us to reflect upon the goodness of God, to reflect upon a good God, a, a God who loves us, a God who is gracious towards us, a God who sent his best, who sent his son to us and for us, for our redemption. So today, when we look at this, we start off, I said that this candle I'm going to be lighting, this first blue, blue candle, is we're lighting hope. Hope. Come on, type that out. Hope. We need hope. We need a, a greater emphasis and a greater reference of hope being reflective in our society, within our homes. In our homes. Would you consider that... Hope is to the soul like breathing is to the body. Come on, I'm going to say that again. Hope to the soul is like breathing to the body. You see, when Jesus came into the earth over 2,000 years ago, he was God's hope that was released into the earth. You see, for over 700 years, when Isaiah had prophesied concerning the Savior, concerning Emmanuel, that, 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 this, that Jesus being born, Emmanuel, God being with us would, would come into the earth. That there were 700 years that had taken place between that prophecy, that prophetic word, and the manifestation of it when we see it in the book of Matthew or Luke. Okay. It's amazing that even between the book of Malachi and Matthew is 400 years, just between that area. And, and, that, and it's called many times by scholars, it says that, that this really was a dark period or dark area, era. And why is it called a dark era? It's really it's called a dark era because that there was no prophetic word, no directive word coming from God that was spoken through by any of his prophets within that season. So it was a very dark season. And like many of us, when it's, when we're this space or this time of in between. You've heard something from God. God has promised. God has promised. You've looked at his word and God has promised you a spouse, promised you children. God maybe has promised you a home. You've seen God's word. God promised you to, to, that he has a bright future for you. He has job, a job for you, a career, business opportunities for you. But between you hearing and knowing and standing on God's word, confessing his word, and the manifestation of it, there's an in-between period. And what happens sometimes is that what takes place is what we see in the book of Proverbs 13, verse 12, that the great Solomon, King Solomon, made this statement. He said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I want you to understand something that as we look at hope, I really see that the, 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 the Israelites for 700 years, 700 years, you've heard a prophetic word that, that the deliverer is coming. You've heard this just like them. I believe many of us experienced exactly the same thing, which is that you can, as a, you can start to birth hopelessness, 
speak about hopelessness. I mean, <coughs> let's be honest. It, uh, let me be let me be Roger for a moment. I don't like waiting for anything, truthfully. I I I I don't like I like to know or I love that everything that I pray for or ask for that immediately it manifests. Immediately it happens. But the reality is that, that that does not happen. It didn't happen for the nation of Israel and it didn't happen, it doesn't happen many times for you and I. And what ends up happening at times is that after a prolonged period of not seeing something happen, hopelessness is birth. And you can either teach it. You can, I believe that even the, 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 the nation of Israel, that they did religious stuff but there was hopelessness because it was now being passed on from generation to generation. And hope deferred, hope that is delayed, hope that, that is prolonged. The, the Greek says it, it's, it's dragged out. A hope that seems to just, my goodness, it's, we thought it's going to happen next year. But we're talking, my, my, my grandfather said it, my grandmother said it. Yeah, I heard them say, my great, my great, great, great. And it passes and it still hasn't happened. I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for that job. And it still hasn't happened. It's a month later. It's a six months later. My goodness, I'm waiting for a husband. I'm waiting for a wife. I'm waiting for children. And it hasn't happened. It's a year. It's five years. I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. My, when is this going to happen? So what happens is it, we get sick on the inside. The nation of Israel had, would have even to a certain level became sick. And there was just a few individuals. There was just a few like a Zachariah who was able to still keep believing, still having hope, still going to, to, to the temple and looking with anticipation. Is it this one? Is it this year? I, I want you to understand something. That though things have been prolonged, I want you to know, God, who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Your God, who said that I am with you, hasn't changed his mind. Who promised you that he would cause you to experience and have not just life, but have an abundant life. I want to remind you, I want to tell you that God does not renege on his promises. I want you to know that God is faithful. I want you to, and remind you that what God says, yes, and he says, yes, yes, and amen, and amen, that he doesn't say no. I want you to understand that I know, I want you to know that yes, you have felt and experienced hopelessness. But in this season today, I'm bringing you a message of hope. I want you to hope again. Hope again in God. I want you to understand and to know that, that yes, hopelessness, we understand, it ends up being like a lingering sickness or a reoccurring sickness that, 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 that comes up. That's because as a result of feeling I didn't get, I'm, I confess, I'm believing, I, I gave, I sowed, I planted seed, and it just seems prolonged, it seems long, it seems like it, it's put off. God, did you forget me? Did you forget our nation? Did you forget our family? Did you forget me? That's how hopelessness, that's what sets in. And I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. Don't be afraid to speak to your loving Heavenly Father from a place of truth. If you feel disappointed, be disappointed. Or articulate your disappointment. Articulate how you, you feel. Because God knows how you really feel. Because as you articulate this, as you let it out, I believe you will end up releasing hopelessness. You will release the feeling of being, of being of delay. 
Because then you'll shift and understand that delay is not denial. That God has not denied you. He didn't deny this the, the nation of Israel because he, he was at work even when it seemed like nothing was happening. Even in the midst of a dark season, God was at work. That's why in Luke chapter 2, look at me. Look at look in Luke chapter 2. Here we see in verse 10. In a reading from the passage translation, these five verses. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid. For I've come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. Oh my goodness. This is why I have a problem with, 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 with ministers or with people who, who bring bad news. Who's, who's telling us of, of negative things, of, of how God is judging, how God wants to, to, to annihilate people. No, come on. God says here in his word, tells us what these angels comes to bring good news. Come on, type that out. Good news, good news, good news. Yes. And it is for some people. No, this good news is for everyone, everywhere. This is why you see us with, with, our, with our shirts on that says kingdom is for everyone. Yes, everyone, every race, every creed, every gender, every type of individual. The, in the, the kingdom of God comes and will invade your life. As you welcome the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God will, is, is, is like yeast in dough. It works from the inside. As you welcome the kingdom in, the kingdom will start to transform you from the inside. Oh, you are on the outside. People think you look exactly the same way. But on the inside, something great. So greater is he who's on the inside of you that is at work bringing about change. Changing the way that you think. Changing the way in which you speak. Pro changing your, your processes. But one of the first things is that the kingdom does is, is letting you know that you are righteous. That you are holy, that causes you to understand that you are sanctified, causing you to understand that, listen, that you have been set apart by God. Because when you welcome Jesus in your life, you welcome the kingdom of God to come into you. The kingdom will overthrow, kick out that foreign entity, kick out the devil's kingdom out of your life and cause you to have he who is the, the, the rule of the universe living on the inside of you. So this is what God said, I come to bring good news the, 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 of letting us understand this. 11, let's go on. Today in Bethlehem, a rescuer, oh my God, was born for you. And he is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by, his, by, the, by this miracle sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Then all at once, a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of heaven. And they all praised God, saying, singing, glory to God in the highest realms of heaven. Watch this. For there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. What? God made a proclamation through his angels. What is he saying here? What, what happened? For there is peace and good hope given to the sons of men. The first sign, the first, the first offering that God wants us to understand is that he's given, he brings hope. Yes, you've been hopeless. Yes, you've, Israel, you've had 700 years. Yes, you've had 400 years of not hearing any that specific prophetic direction. Yes, you, child of God, have not seen the manifestation of the things that you've asked for in 2023, that you've been believing God even for this, within this decade or for the past five, 10 years. I want you to know today what God is saying to you and I. He wants to, that he is a God of hope. Jesus was the hope to the world. And God was saying, I am now, I sent my son who is hope to elevate you, to lift your expectation up. God wants us to have hope in him. Hope again. 
You see, hope is the Greek word elip, which means to have anticipation, to anticipate something, to welcome, to properly have an expectation of something that is sure. It is sure that Jesus was coming. It is sure that he, Jesus is coming again. It is a sure thing that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of the believer. It is a sure thing that what God has said concerning you he has been has been already been released. It's waiting for your 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 ability to acquire it your ability of accessing it by faith i want you to understand today in the name of jesus i prophesy to you in the name of jesus that even as jesus the deliverer came once and for all one time that he came and the next time that he's coming i want you to know that he is has not forsaken you he has not forsaken you that though that the season may have seemed long and dragged out, seem like nothing is happening, I want you to know, just like Matthew declared that in Matthew one twenty two, so all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. I want to remind you, I want to encourage you, remind yourself, of what God has said, the prophetic words that's gone out over your life, the written word of God, as well as the spoken that has been released through your man, your woman of God, released through brothers and sisters who have released, who have prophesied God's word over you. I want you to lock in and lay hold and believe again. Lay hold, have hope that God is the one who is at work both to will and do according to his good pleasure that he has done it he is at work and don't give up don't cast hope aside don't cast hope aside come on type that out type it out in bold hope don't don't cast hope aside why isaiah 9 verse 2 as well as uh, six and seven tells us something. It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, light has dawned. And what? Then we hear in Isaiah 9, tells them, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And what? And the government shall be upon his shoulders. But what? His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Come on, glory be to God. Of the greatness of his government, of the greatness of God and peace, there will be no end. He will reign, glory to God. He will reign, he will reign, he will reign forever. Listen, man, the King of Righteousness is in you. Allow the king of hope to rise up inside of you. Why? Isaiah 40, 31 tells us, but those who hope in the Lord, whoo, those who hope in the Lord, wait, will renew their strength. I believe even in the midst of that in between season that we all don't like the in between what we believe god for and what we're looking for manifestation we're waiting for manifestation that hallway that hallway of belief of keeping ourselves to are we going to continue to trust in the veracity of god's word i'm going to continue to wait i'm going to i know I, it's dark i know i don't see it i know that nothing is happening i know and i'm crying and i'm, I'm and, and i have and i i believe but yet i don't believe i believe but lord help my unbelief i believe but i'm being honest lord when is it going to happen did you forget me but it's in that space we're being told that we're being renewed we're being renewed where we learn to have confidence in god's word and that's where then we renew our strength we renew 
our confidence in him that it's not through our effort it's not through how much how much uh, praying that we we do it's not through how much reading our bible that we do it's not through how much confessing that we do it's not through all the external stuff but it's through i love this verse it's through our trust that we access strength yes it's right in that space of where even in the midst of that space of feeling hopeless that as we access as we choose to get quiet as we choose to trust or have hope again that strength is then built up strength is 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 developed and manifest inside of us you see this is what happened with the nation of israel you see, see that that takes place that and God was letting the world know good hope has come to you. The, the hope was being birthed into the world to receive their king, to receive the king. You see, hope defined, let me give this a little bit further here. Hope defined is a, a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. What is it that you are hoping God for? What are you hoping for in this season, in 2023, Christmas 2023? I want you to be bold enough, be audacious enough to declare it, to declare it, to, to communicate, to speak it to your hope, your God of hope, because he wants to fill you and I with a level of expectation. Romans 15, 13 tells us, may the God of hope fill you, fill us with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. Oh my goodness. God of hope wants me to overflow with hope. Yes, yes, yes. Advent, yes, in this season, this month, we need to be men and women who are believers, who are full of hope. Hope that, that as he came, as Jesus came into the earth over 2,000 years ago, we look with great hope and with a great anticipation of his next appearing. We don't know when that is, but we have hope that it is going to take place because he said what he says he's going to do it. And if it takes another 1,000 years, we, pass, we want to pass on to our children. And to our children's children, the hope, the anticipation that, yes, he may come today, but he may not come for another thousand years. But we wait with anticipation. We wait eagerly. We wait with strength. Glory to God. Having a uh, in the midst of it, a plan, having a dream, having a longing, a yearning, a craving. Yes, that's all. Having optimism. That's hope. Having optimism is all grounds of hope. Yes, this is why Jeremiah 29, 11, that we've locked in even for this decade, that we understand, yes, that God, the word of God declaring towards us for i know the plans god says i have for you yes the plans that god has for me he has for you he has for every individual the plans he declares plans to prosper you yes not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future yes who has the plans the issue is god's got the plans god's got the plans for his people for us so today, as we close out, I want you to lock into this reality for this Sunday, this candle that we've lit today called hope. I want to encourage you to rest in the hope. Rest in hope this Christmas. Rest in hope this Christmas. Acts 2, 26 and 28 says, no wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. Why? My body rests in hope. 
You've shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Let your body, your body rest in hope. Rest in hope. Rest in hope. Even now, I decree and declare over you. I declare that your body, physical body, experiences rest. Resting in the hope. The anticipation, the plans, yes, the, the desires that you have, that you rest knowing, rest and be secure in the fact that God got you, that everything is going to be okay. Yes, everything is going to be okay. Hope is having grounds for believing something good. Like the great Oral Roberts used to say, something good is about to happen to you. Yes, that type of waking up with that reality and that confidence and, and having this hope that something good is going, I don't care what it looks like, something good is going to happen to me. Yes, yes, I have a hope, I have an, of an expected end. Something good is going to happen. Why? Because God has big plans for you as he had for his people. I believe God, who is a God of hope, he sent hope into the world and hope is Jesus over 2,000 years ago. So today, we continue to look with anticipation. We look backwards, celebrating that he did come. God fulfilled his word and sent his son, sent hope. But we also look with anticipation for the consolation, for the fulfillment that one day he also will come again. Amen. And with that, we have strength on the inside. Let me pray with you as we close up. Lord, I decree and declare over each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Come on, just stretch your hand out right now, just as a point of contact on the TV screen. Just stretch your hand out. Come on. Yes, right now. I'm agreeing with you as a point of contact. Yes, by the Spirit, that there's no distance in the Spirit. He who's joined to the Lord is one Spirit. And we, we, we agree as believers touching, we touch. Touching is not just physical touch, but touching is touching through agreement. Yes. So I touch you in the spirit right now where you are. And I believe that and I release over you that the spirit of truth, the spirit of grace that would cause you to maintain hope right now. Yes. That you would you would have an assurance, glory to God, that what you have prayed for is already done. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I declare that God's promises are yea and amen over you. And that God said that no good thing will he withhold from you. Because you walk uprightly. Well, how do you walk up? You walk uprightly because you are allowing God to walk in and through you. Yes, but, but I decree and declare that because you wait upon the Lord for your definition of what that good thing that you see it manifested in your life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I declare hope is your strength. Hope is your anchor. And hope causes your boat to float in this season. Causes you to rise up to a new for causing you to be elevated to a new dimension of thinking, of speaking, and of living. I declare this to be so in the name of Jesus. I declare, as David declared in Psalms 18 verse 1, that the Lord loves you. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your rock. The Lord is your fortress. I declare this to be so in the name of Jesus. I declare that the Lord is your deliverer, but he is also your rock and he is your I declare this to be so in the name of Jesus and that because you have hope your hope will not make you ashamed 
in Jesus' name. God bless you. Today, as we start this first Sunday of Advent, I believe that, that God is going to meet you and has met each one of us at a place of our expectation and causes us to rise up. So I speak and I release this over you. I want to encourage you, maybe, why don't you? I, I really sense this as I was ministering this, that you need, if you don't have a candle, light it. Go buy a candle, go to the dollar store, get a candle, light it. Let it be reflective within your home. Jesus is the light of the world. But this first candle being lit, and it reminds you of hope, that he's a God of hope. And hope is inside of you. And that is a hope that is not going to cause you to be ashamed. God loves you. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday as we continue in this series, this Advent series of His Coming, where we're going to look at joy. So we're going to look at love, love, love. Second love, second candle. God bless you. The Lord bless you. Cause you to be a blessing.